Good morning. Hello, I don't see any faces, but I sure see names. Hey, hey Judy, Judy, I'm on a call. I'm, I'm just going to meet you for a second, okay? Okay, okay. All right. All right. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. We've only got a few of us on. I wonder where everybody is this morning. We'll give it a couple minutes. I know it's only 9.01. So I'm going to mute you guys for just a couple seconds, and then we'll probably get started at exactly 9.05 just to give people some time to jump on. Um, and uh, are you are you guys gonna hi? Good morning, Alma. Good morning. Good morning, Lakeisha. I love to see all your faces. It's so comforting. <laughs> That was a hint for all of the faces I can't see. I know. I picked up on that, actually. <laughs> We're going to give it just a few minutes, guys, OK? Let people get Uh, I'm gonna go to the training room. So give me just two seconds here, guys. And then I can help make sure that it's okay. I just like to start on time. Yes. 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 Nine. Drives me crazy. So you know what? I don't even know my kid. I'd be logging on somebody else's computer. For the power to pull up the power plant to log in the KW. She's got an email to me. I'm just not ready. A class has started. I'm gonna go back to my office. <laughs> like, I'm not ready. You, you figured it out? No. Uh, I mean, I figured out a, a well, workaround yesterday. To, to be on Zoom, or are you gonna be on here? Uh, I'm gonna be on Zoom. I brought my computer. Oh, okay. so we got it. Yeah, I just wanna get started. Yeah. It's taking a while to get it up. Thank you. Of course. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't on mute. All right, let's do it, guys. How is everybody this morning? There you are, Payal. Good, wonderful to see you. Good morning. How are you? You're on mute, though. Oh, I can't hear you. Or maybe I, maybe you're not on mute. I just can't hear no, you. No, I'm not. Oh, there you go. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Thank you. Tamita, good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's good everybody morning. doing? Hey, Alma. Good morning. Hi, Trish. Everybody feeling good? Yeah. No. Good, because we got a good class today. We're going to talk about open houses. And, um, but first, I know a lot of you guys um, shared with me after class that you learned some things yesterday about uh, marketing, you know, on command and stuff. Tell me what you did yesterday. Did anybody do anything new or different that you learned? Come here. 
I mean, I didn't do anything new. I did make my, I did my 10-4. I had a lot of fun doing my 10-4 yesterday. It was um, really good to talk to certain people. I, I call a lot of very old open house leads from like October, November, December. Um, you know, open up the conversation, you know, made relationship and it was really good you know i asked them if it was okay if i started them on a smart plan and everything and so now i'm sending those thank you cards out that i did uh, for those people that gave me their addresses today okay um that's awesome anybody else i have catching up to do just to let you know yesterday uh I had some issues one after the other. Just a crazy day. Not no excuses, but I just understand life happens, right? Four different things happen. I was like, gee, freaking weird. So <laughs> I, that just tell me I'm gonna be working Saturday too to make sure that I get everything I need done this week. Okay. All right. Well, wait to stick in there. So mm -hmm. let's talk about open houses. I know you guys had some questions yesterday, and I promise you we would talk about all of that today. So um, that's exactly what we're about to do. We're about to talk about open houses. I'm going to share my screen with you um, so that you can see. At least I thought I was. Huh? One second. Let me make sure I got it up. Um, and we're going to, uh, how many of you guys have already been doing open houses? I have. This is Bettina. Bettina, you have? Okay. Tell us just a little bit about the way that you go about uh, conducting an open house. Mm. And it doesn't have to be right or wrong. We're not looking for you to be a, a pro mm -hmm. or anything. Just what have you done or what have you seen done? So mine was a little different because um, the lead agent already did the prospecting of the neighborhood. And he had um, four he had four properties um, that he had listed at the same time. So he already did the door knocking. Okay. So what I started doing, which was new, this is new, because at first I wasn't really getting that many leads. And so I started using this app called Open Home. Okay. And with Open Home, um, as, as they're walking in, just say to them, <clears throat> hey, um, do you mind signing? I mean, can you, no, please sign in not making it asking a question, but please sign in for the, um, for the seller. Okay. Um, okay. So I can capture their information on the front end. And then halfway through, I'll just allow them to go ahead and walk through the house and then halfway through, just go up to them and say, what questions do you have for me? So that allows me to engage with them, find out if they have an agent already. Um, also to see um, what they're looking for and also to share my app. Okay, good. I like all of those things that you said. Um, open houses obviously is an opportunity to lead generate for buyers and sellers. Um, I, the obvious way is for buyers, of course, because uh, you have people coming into a house who obviously are interested in buying a house or would like to see a house. So those, that's kind of the given that you're going to be lead generating for buyers. But how do you think open houses help you lead generate for sellers? Well, some of those people might be in an existing home that they need to sell before they move. For sure. Some of those people may need to sell a home. Also, how often do you think nosy neighbors come by open houses? All the time. <laughs> All the time. And they may be doing a couple of things. One, they're coming to see the house, you know, and what the house looks like in their neighborhood, coming to see what the house is going to sell for, which means that they're interested in knowing what their house is going to sell for. And uh, maybe they're coming to check you out. You know, they need to talk to a real estate agent. Um, so lots of different ways that open houses help you to actually lead generate for buyers and sellers. There are benefits, of course, to lead generating in this way. It is one of the most inexpensive ways uh, to lead generate. Um, you're not paying for ads. You're not paying for mailers. Um, you're not, you know, you could be, you could do all those things. Um, but generally, it's a pretty cost-effective way to get clients. Um, and there's a high return on investment if you did spend any money and for your time uh, for the exposure that you're getting as well. Now, when it says exposure, what do you think it means? Getting your name out there. How? How are you getting your name out there at an open house? Um, business cards. Your business cards, yes. Signs. Signs, absolutely signs. And so this is when it becomes important for you to have your own signs. Because uh, this may or may not be your own listing that you're holding an open house on, right? 
you you may or may not be um be um you that, may or may not be actually hold on here uh, that was my question uh if we are you are hosting open house for somebody else like you in other words if you are not a listing agent uh, you can put your own sign outside on the house yeah absolutely absolutely, oh, absolutely. The, the listing agent probably have their own sign saying for sale yeah but why do you want to mark that everybody knows <laughs> real estate agents all know you're there to get business for you right so if i have a listing and you ask me if you can hold my open house i know you're not there to market me right oh, okay you're there to market yourself yeah, and so generally you would bring your own signs I don't care. I just want the listing to sell. Oh, really? Oh, and if I didn't, I would be holding the open house myself. <laughs> if I'm that concerned about my name being out there with my signs, I would hold the open house myself. But I don't want to. Because one, I may have too many listings, or I just don't want to. That's why you're doing it. And so, yes, absolutely. So um, you put the same absolutely. sign with your photo and say for sale and open house. Is that what? No. Yeah, yeah, you sure will. Hold on, guys. Jake is trying to, I'm just going to let... Um, Jake, pull this up. Give me a second. I'm going to send him this information real quick. Get off. Presentation. There we go. Don't mind me for just two seconds. I can send this to him. But yeah, no, no, um, Payal. Yeah, the, the purpose of you holding open houses is to market yourself. And when you're holding someone else's listing, agents understand that. Now, you still want to make sure that, you know, I would still say, hey, it's okay that I'm going to use my own, own signs, right? And, um, and, and almost always, they're okay with that. And that's the understanding in, in most cases. Again, every agent is different. So you may just want to make sure that that's okay with them. But uh, almost always, that is, um, that's the intention. And they know that that's the intention uh, for you to do that. So, uh, so yes, that's not, that's not uncommon in any, any way, shape, or form for you to do that. All right. I mean, can you, um, let me know when you guys can... Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So yes. So that's, let me go back. So that's, that's the exposure for you. That's how you're getting the exposure because you are using your name, your signs. Uh, and we'll talk about door knocking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Cause you even generally oftentimes would be creating a flyer with your picture. Hi Jake, you got, you got it up there. I'm on my iPad, but since I just got your text message, I'll pull it up in here now. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Take out the listing agent sign and put yours the day you are doing open house for them. Well, they no, their sign is going to stay in the front, in the yard. Their sign is going to stay in the yard. We're talking about open house signs. Oh, I see. Open house signs that are going to go around the neighborhood. And so while we're talking about open house signs, how many signs do you think you need? As many as on major intersection. I say depending on how deep the house is in the neighborhood. Lots. What's lots? Give me some numbers. Um, you need at least 10 or 15 signs. 10 or 15. Jake, what'd you say? I said 20. 20? Okay. Does that sound crazy to you guys? Yeah. No. <laughs> some people are saying, yeah, yeah. No, you, you, you really cannot um, overdo it. There's not too many uh, signs you can have. I know an agent who always puts out 40. She's, she, she's a mega agent and uh, she has, and, and then the, what she'll do is she literally goes to the office and she prints the address to just place tape on the open house sign. Because how many times have you guys ever been to an open house and you're trying to follow the arrows and you're driving around in circles and you never can't find a little stupid house because <laughs> directions are taking you every kind of which away. Um, so on her open house sign, she literally prints out the address and tapes it to all of her open house signs when she puts them up. Um, of course, hoping it doesn't rain or snow or something, but, um, but that's what she does to make sure people can just find the open house. But as many as possible, that's, that's absolutely the correct answer. Um, now, of course, you paid money for your signs with your name on them, so you may not have 40 signs. Um, but you could always just get the little cheap ones that you use, but you want to have as many as possible because it is about the exposure. The other benefit of the open house is um, that you get qualified leads from just one listing. You can stand in one place and have people coming in uh, and, and they're qualified leads for you to get. Uh, and it's a very, very productive way for you to meet buyers and sellers. Uh, so there is a lot of good that holding open houses can do. Now, 
You guys just hold that thought for 10 seconds because I do want to be in the training room because we want to have the whole training room experience. And we'd love for you. You guys know you can come in here, right? Yes. You don't have to. I understand. <laughs> Chris was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly don't have to. But if you want to, it's very clean. Everything is sanitized frequently. And uh, you're welcome to come into the office if you want. But give me one second because I am going to go to the training room so I can. Because um, I don't, do I echo to you guys when I'm in my office here? No. no. Okay. And, you know, uh, transparency. After this CLIMB 2.0, I do plan on spending more time in the office just to let you know, Julie. As you muted yourself, we can't hear you. <laughs> I think she's walking to the training room. Yeah. <laughs> she's definitely talking. We, we're reading our lips now. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're on our own, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't know when people put open house sign and they put their name. I have only seen open house sign by itself. There is no name or content. You can pay for those signs with your name, your face, and your likeness if you like. The only oh. reason why I don't is because certain cities have ordinances about putting out signs and they will take your signs. They will. <laughs> um, a certain like uh, city of Plano does not play. They will take your signs. And I, I found that the signs that had my name on them, they are able to contact me to find me for, uh, <laughs> for putting But I guess you would want, wouldn't you want them to contact you so you can get your signs back? Yeah, but it, sometimes some cities, it comes with a fine. Oh, yeah. Just That's what I was going to ask. How much yeah. is the fine? Um, it's different for different cities, but in Plano, it was like uh, $10 a sign or something like that. And I had, they had two of my signs. I had to pay Whoa. Well, so, the, so what if you had 40 out, huh? Exactly. <laughs> That's why I was like, you know what? So I went back to the plain open house sign. So if they get taken, my feelings aren't hurt, you know, and I don't get the extra fine on it. So, but I do have plenty of those signs, just the open house signs getting you to the, to the place. So, okay, That's false alarm. I'm not going in the training room. It's not working in there again. Um, so uh, I just want to say, what do you, I, I, I forgot to mention, what do you think the goal of holding an open house actually is? Um, Generation. It's a lot. Of Always the right answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, ho but hopefully, in my opinion, there is someone that's coming in that needs a buyer representation and you can represent them. Yeah, yeah. The, the goal is all, always to put yourself in the path of opportunity, right? To meet people, um, potentially meet buyers, sellers, and lead generation, exactly what you said. Only reason I bring that up is because we don't want to lose perspective of the fact that the seller thinks that we're there to sell their house. Okay. <laughs> That's what the seller thinks. The seller has hired an agent, whom is Keller Williams Central, right? And the broker is representing this client, and the seller is under the impression that the broker is there to sell their home. All right, and, and we represent the broker. So I just wanted to throw that in there to make sure that you remember that when you are in someone's home, you represent that client because our brokerage represents that client. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means you represent that client because you work for this brokerage. So that is just to keep in mind that you don't go in there and because sometimes sellers will come into their own open house and you don't even know they're the seller. You know, so you want to make sure that you remember that you're actually there to, yes, lead generate, but you're also representing Keller Williams in the sale of this home for this particular seller. So don't lose sight of that and do know that they sometimes do come to their own open house um, to see how you're doing. And if they start asking you questions about their house and you're directing them to find them a different house, that's going to be an issue. So just keep that in your back pocket that you know that sometimes a seller may secret shop you and that you're, you're, you're there to represent the brokerage and sell the home. I've heard, I've had people call me with complaints about other agents that held the house and the, and the agent in the house would be saying something bad about the house that they were holding open. Uh, you can't do that. We represent this client, you know? <laughs> you, can't, you can't be like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, the basement is so small, I don't know. There's a better house I can show you if you want me to take you down the street. And people do it, people do that. You know, so you gotta, I just wanna remind you that we do actually represent the seller. <laughs> So don't do that. Don't do that. Um, so anyways, uh, let's move on to a little bit about how to particularly hold the open house. 
Um, and we've got it broken down for us in three different ways, prepare, prospect, pursue. Um, so in the preparation phase, tell me what you think happens during the preparation phase. This is when you're setting up for the open house. Um, What's happening? Staging. Post on staging? social media. Okay, you're putting it on social media. You're staging it. What else? Preparing your flyers. Flyers, yeah. What are you doing with the flyers? Um, you're creating them to print to have for prospects that come to the house. Okay, so you're going to have flyers in the house. What else are you doing with the flyers? I circle prospect a couple of days before the open house. And you're going to circle prospects. You're going to call these people, Lakeisha? Yes. Sometimes I call people, sometimes I do or not. Okay, so call it. And that's where I was getting with those flyers. The flyers that you're you distribute in the neighborhood. Flyers. Yeah. Yeah, you distribute those flyers in the closed neighborhood, few homes. Yeah, you're going to distribute those flyers in the neighborhood. So that's all falling under our, our prepare, right? So some of the things you've said, okay, warning. Okay, you know, okay. KW always has to give the warning about calling people who don't want to be called. Is, uh, who is that Jake in there? Edel? Yes. Does he have his computer with him so he can join us? Because we're having technical difficulties? We're not having technical difficulties. I can hear you and I see you. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're all caught up here. Oh, okay. Awesome. Amazing. All right. Um, okay, so of course, here's our, here's our warning, guys. Don't call people who don't want to be called. Um, so under the prepare phase, the way that they've got this set out is they have kind of given you a timeline of when you can be doing stuff. The timeline's not as important as actually doing the stuff. Obviously, you don't want to be, um, you know, trying to call people and sending mailers out the day of or, you know, the day before. You want to give yourself some time. Uh, so they have a suggested timeline of how you can set yourself up for success. So I, we'll talk about what they're saying to do on these days, but it doesn't necessarily need to be during these days. Uh, but all of these activities are, are fantastic activities to, to um, do. Let me see, what is this happening here? No, I don't want to do that. Um, our, our activities to do. So some of them is, of course, we want to select the open house. So let's talk about that for just a minute, about where you're going to hold an open house, because we already talked about the fact that it might not be your listing, right? Um, we're doing this for lead generation purposes to find motivated buyers and sellers. And so you would be proactive in finding open houses that you can hold from other agents in the office. Tell me how we go about doing that. Let's start there. Where do we even get these open house opportunities from? Other realtors that are in the office that are like listing specialists and they, they have them, um, they'll put announcements out on their like um, intranet to let you know that they're looking for open house people. Certain teams offer open houses for people to do. So you're saying, I'm going to paraphrase and add some stuff you didn't say. Um, you're saying that you're going to find out who the top listing agents are in the market center and introduce yourselves to them and ask them if they have any listings or when they have listings, if they would consider allowing you to hold them as open houses. Is that what you said? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what Did I heard. Yeah. Yes, sir, Chris. Yeah. Is it a, what about for those of us that have not held an open house yet? Uh, do realtors, okay. do agents Simple solution. Um, one, go to, yes, you can. Here's the thing. A um, couple things. One, just go to some open houses. Okay. You, you don't, you can just visit open houses that are available. Just look at how other people hold open houses. For years, I, I don't know what it was. I had this fascination with just going to open houses and we could never make it on a Sunday from church to the house without stopping at like five or six open houses and my kids hated it. But I just want to see one, the house, and two, I'm interested in seeing how agents are holding their open house because everybody does it different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so one, Chris, I would say just stop at some open houses and see how agents are doing it. Uh, you'll find very quickly what you like about how some agents are holding it and what you don't like about how some agents are holding it. Uh, so one, I would say that. Two, you certainly can ask another agent who has an open house coming up if you may shadow them or just let them know you're going to stop by their open house. Uh, you can do that, and there's plenty of people who would be willing to allow you to do that. Uh, and But the best way, Chris, is for you to do it. And so we're going to learn exactly how to do that today, and you just get the experience uh, yourself. But just stop by some. You can stop by any. Okay. Um, or find a... So, so yes, Lakeisha, we're going to find listing agents who have listings. We're going to introduce ourselves to them. I would recommend that you do that in person if possible. It's always kind of awkward to get a call from some random person you've never met in your office asking you to represent their seller. 
that's kind of weird a little bit. And it's fine if people do it, but it's much better if you just actually introduce yourself in person and say, hey, here's who I am. Uh, because again, uh, it takes a lot to get a listing, you know, and this is their reputation and they uh, have a relationship with the seller and you don't want just any Joe Schmo coming in and messing that up. So you do want to introduce yourself to them if possible. Now, of course, we're not in the office so much nowadays, so that may have to be, you know, through social media or email or phone or whatever. Um, but that's one way we can find open houses. Correct, Lakeisha. How else can we find open houses? Julia, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So if we know another very top producing agent, but they're not in the central office, they're in another office, um, Keller Williams, but a, but a different location. Um, can you ask them as well? Uh, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to say the answer that I know, I don't know about Texas, but I'm going to say no. Um, general, ge generally, I'll just say from experience in other Keller Williams in around the country, it needs to be the same broker, the okay. same brokerage, but it may be different here. I would have yeah. to ask. It is different. Like okay. I can host an open house even for an agent that's at Epi if I wanted to. Really? Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Good, good news. Oh, that's oh, you said you said you can do from other brokerages. Uh, yes. yeah, they can thanks yes. other brokerages as well. Yeah. So yeah, any KW is not a big deal. But like, so I could host for another Ebby agent or Day Premium, like any of those. But they can't host for us. And that's, so, an so that's an office policy. Um, so that's Got a very okay. office policy. Yeah. But yeah, you can host. For, I mean, so that's one of the ways that like I will search on the MLS if it's a really pretty house that I think it's going to go fast since it's only been on the market for a couple of days and it's the first weekend, you can call that agent if you wanted to and ask them if they're already planning on an open house. Well, so that is my very next thing of how you can find an open house, Jake. And so same same thing. So you can go to the, oh, now knowing that you don't necessarily have to be in the same office, um, what what you could do mm -hmm. is always go to the MLS. How many of you guys have a farm area? Let's, let me ask that. Anybody have, Jake has a farm area. So what Jake and Lakeisha may do is go to the MLS search new listings and say, hey, love that house. It's in my farm area. Call the listing agent and say, hey, I saw you have a new listing in my neighborhood. I'm wondering if um, you're, you're thinking of holding an open house this week. And if not, I would love to do that for you. And be proactive about this. You have to be proactive about lead generation. So you, yes, you can wait till someone posts something on our KW, intro, uh, on our KW Facebook page, but you can be proactive in a lot of ways of getting open houses in the neighborhoods you want to do open houses in. So you would find those listings and contact those agents and ask if you can hold an open house. Does that make sense? Yes. So now we're at the step. So that's what they're saying Monday. They're saying Monday, find yourself a house to hold open. So you're going to find yourself a house that's in a good location and uh, also identify a good time. So when we say good location, what I mean by good location is maybe preferably in your farm area or in an area, you know, that is a high traffic area. Maybe there's a beautiful house on a very busy street and you know it would have a lot of activity. That might be a perfect opportunity for you to hold an open house there. So one, identify the location and uh, then identify what time you're holding these open houses. What time do you think is a prime time or an ideal time to hold an open house? One to three. Anytime. <laughs> I like any time. Any time. But you say one to three, Chris? Yeah. Why one to three? Because I see it so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just like a pop of time, one to three or two to four. Oh, whenever I see open houses, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. It depends on the season. During football season, Sundays are not ideal because even if the people in your area are a majority of Cowboy fans, you'll still have some people that are watching other games or what may it, whatever it may be. Um, same thing, you don't want to host during like big college football games. So you have to look at what season <laughs> is, what's going on around you. So uh, anytime, or sometimes there are times that are not good times. You do need to know what else is going on. Like Jake is saying, people sometimes, you'll be surprised how many agents pay no attention to what's going on in the world whatsoever. And they're scheduling an open house during the Super Bowl. 
you know, like <laughs> things like that. So, uh, so one, we've identified where we want to hold this open house, what house we're holding. We've identified what time we're going to hold the open house. And then it's moving on to Tuesday where it's saying, now we're going to start to do some social media marketing. Um, and we're going to maybe call these people in the neighborhood. Lakeisha mentioned circle prospecting, which is you have to pay, of course, to get a list of phone numbers in the area or the neighborhood. Maybe you use Mojo, maybe you use circle prospecting or whatever um, service you're using to get phone numbers. You can actually okay. get phone numbers and call the neighbors. You can use Remind. It's free. It's Remind. Yeah, you can use Remind. Yeah. yeah. It's part of your Netflix uh, subscription. And, however, make sure we adhere to the do not call list. If you're on the do not call list, don't call people that don't want to be called. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't understand. How, 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 uh, how are you using Remind? For what purpose? When you log into Netris and you put in your, um, your license number and your password, there are several icons on that page. Most people simply go to Netris, but there's an icon called Remind in there. You can use Remind to identify a certain neighborhood and it will provide you contact information like addresses, telephone numbers, and email addresses, and full first and last names of the people who own the houses in that neighborhood. I use that list to make my circle prospecting. Prospecting. Oh, okay. Is that free or is it, um, is there a fee for that one? It's part of your MLS, what you um, pay for to get access to the MLS every, uh, I think it's every three months that you pay quarterly for Quarter. uh, your fees. Right. It's part okay. of Thank yeah. you. That's so, awesome. I didn't know about that tool. Yeah. So you can call the neighbors and then, and then also, of course, you want to post online. Now it's on the MLS. So you want to make sure that the open house is part is filled out so that it shows up on all the public websites and stuff that there's going to be an open house. But you can also post it on social media and online. And, uh, and of course, um, if there's a sign in the yard, you can hang a sign writer early in advance that says, hey, open house on Saturday from one to three or open house on Sunday from one to or whatever. You can hang a sign writer on the sign that says that there's going to be an open house coming up. Um, so you can do all of those things. And then you post online. At this point, they're saying Thursday. Again, this is just a suggested timeline. You can do all these things whenever. Um, but you want to post online. You may also want to send it to your database. Why would you want to send it to your database that you're having an open house? Because you also let them know you're working. Yeah. And even if these people are nowhere near this open house, that you're, this is another opportunity for you to just keep them. Again, remember, the database is to keep people top of mind that you're a real estate professional that they should reach out to. One of the ways you can stay top of mind is to make sure you're sending them pertinent information. And here you are actually working. You're not just sending them random, hire me, hire me messages. You're actually sending, hey, I actually do this. I'm a real estate professional. I'm holding an open house on Saturday. So whether they come or not is irrelevant. You wanna make sure that the people in your database see you and that you're visible. So, uh, so that's another way. Why else would we be inviting people to our database? I mean, inviting people from our database? Because you never know who they know. They could refer it to some, they could share the page or share the announcement and one of their friends could be in the market to buy in that very neighborhood. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, awesome. So we posted online as well. Uh, we're, it says on Friday to prepare market stats and comps. Why are we doing that? Because so you're educated and can answer questions. Yeah, there's nothing worse than holding an open house and somebody comes in and says, hey, how much is that yellow house on the corner going for? And you don't even know that there's a yellow house on the corner for sale. Okay. Or they say, gosh, it seems like these houses in this neighborhood are really exp expensive and you know nothing about the neighborhood. You know, that's not a good look. <laughs> okay. So you want to make sure you've educated yourself on the market and that you understand what else is out there and the comps that are out there so you can speak you know, educate, you know, so you sound like an educated professional when you speak about this property. Um, and of course, we printed our open house flyers as well. And um, when should we door knock? Let's say we are holding the open house on Saturday at one to three o'clock. When should we door knock with our flyers that we've made? Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe as early as Wednesday or Thursday. Mm, what do you guys think? When, is, when, are you door knocking before? When, when do you want to door knock for this open house? The open house EDL is on Saturday from one to three. When are we door knocking for it? A couple of days before. He said Monday or Tuesday. I was going to say Wednesday, Thursday. So several people said Wednesday, Thursday, Monday or Tuesday. What if I forget? If you tell me on Tuesday and it's not till Saturday. You can do it Friday. You could do it the morning of too. 
You yeah. can do it the morning. Hey, if you get there early enough and you've got it all set up and you're twiddling your thumbs, go knock on some doors. Uh, remind people that there's an open house about to happen in a couple of minutes. So all of this is the preparation phase. So as you can see, a whole lot of work went into the open house before we've ever had the open house. We haven't even gotten to Saturday yet. We're doing all this all week long in preparation for an open house, which is why you need to identify your open house early on in the week so that you have time to do all of these activities. So this is our prepare phase for an open house. The lo location, the time, we're looking at traffic patterns. Uh, we're seeing what is the local practices in this neighborhood, like Lakeisha's saying, they'll plan on take your signs. You know what I mean? You wanna make sure you know the rules and the practices in this particular neighborhood, in this city, uh, all of those types of things. So um, did you guys look at the scripts yesterday? The homework was to review the open house scripts. Yes. I did look at them as well. You look, some, some of you looked at them, some of you maybe didn't. Um, I want to, I want to do it right now. I'd like to, is it in your, do you guys have it in your student manual, the actual scripts, or do you have to pull it up? It's in the um, Ignite element script, open house script, starting on page 24. Okay, so you have it with you, though, is my question. You have that? Yes. Okay, I'm going to pull it up just for the sake of, because we're going to actually <clears throat> do some script practice for door knocking for open houses right now. Um, so I'm going to pull it up as well. So in case you don't have it, you can just follow along on my screen. Um, it's pretty much the last page in the elemental script book. Can you guys still see my screen? Do you see my script book? We don't. You do not? No. Okay, hold on. Okay, how about now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so page 25, uh, no, that's not page 20. Where, why am I not on page 25? Open house scripts, here we are. Before the open house. Um, here's one to call and invite the neighbors. Uh, I'm looking for the door knocking open house script though, before you invite the neighbors, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, someone who can see the screen Please read this script for me. You're gonna fill in the blanks, of course, with your name and your market center name, and you can make up a homeowner's name. But someone read the, um, before the open house, inviting our neighbor script. It starts with hello. I'll wait. Hello, this is Lakeisha from Keller William and the Brian Davis team. I'm calling because John Smith has asked me to invite you to the open house on their home at 123 Main Street on Sunday at 2 p.m. Feel free to drop by. And if you know of anyone from work or a friend that would like to come with you, please feel free to bring them. And by the way, when I find a buyer, I like to be able to share with them what people like about the neighborhood. May I ask you what you like about the neighborhood? Excellent. And if you were to move, where would you go next? And when would that be? Okay, why are we asking these people all these random questions? Because you need to see what kind of services you're gonna be providing them. Are you just selling their home? Or are you selling and buying? We're, we're door knocking. This is a door knocking or a phone call script, right? Yep. And you're so, prospecting. go ahead. What did you say, Jake? It's prospecting. You're trying to figure out if you can get additional leads from that one, even though they're not talking about it or thinking about it, they may not be, or they may be, you don't know. So you're trying to see if, if you can meet them where they are, basically. Correct, we're door knocking for an open house, yeah, but really I'm just door knocking, right? And this is my excuse to knock on your door and ask you if you're gonna be selling your house uh, or if you would like to sell your house. This is what I'm doing. Again, we're, we're killing three, four birds with one stone here with this open house. We've got all kinds of opportunities to market ourselves and to lead generate with just this one open house. Um, so someone else actually role play with Lakeisha like you're a real person at the door that she's knocked on and have a real conversation with her. Again, use it. That was fantastic, by the way, Lakeisha. Um, using this same script. Does someone want to be the homeowner of the, of the house she's stopping at? I missed that because I got a phone call, but I don't mind being the homeowner. Okay. All right. So Lakeisha, do that same script again. You're knocking on Chris's door. Okay. Hello, my name is Lakeisha. I'm with Keller Williams and the Brian Davis Group. Hi, hello, how are you today? What's your name? Uh, my name is Chris, how you doing? 
I'm doing great, Chris. Listen, I'm just stopping by your home today to let you know that your neighbor right down the street, John Smith, has asked me to invite you to an open house at his home right there on 123 Main Street. At, it's on Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, are you busy that day? Uh, Saturdays are typically uh, heavy in the morning, but by 2, I should be available. Okay, well, look, feel free to drop by. And if you know of anyone, like from work or a friend, that would like to come with you, please feel free to bring them too. And, and by the way, when I, find a, when I find a buyer, I like to be able to share with them what people like about the neighborhood. May I ask what it is that you like about this neighborhood? It's just seemed to be a family-friendly neighborhood. A lot of kids running around, enjoying themselves. And for the most part, it's pretty safe as well. Wow, that's great. That's excellent. And, and Chris, if you were to move, where would you go next? And when would that be? Wow. You know, my wife would probably say we'll go up north and we'll do it next year. But uh, I don't agree with her. I'm so comfortable right now that I don't want to move at all. You don't want to move at all? You haven't thought about it at all? No, my wife has, but not me as much. Well, I would love to sit down to, with you and talk about any real estate needs that you have, you and your wife. Do you have any questions? Um, I'll let you know when I come to the open house on Saturday. I'll All bring right. her with me. Thank you so much for that, Chris. And um, Saturday, 2 p.m., I'll see you then. Thank you. Good Thanks. job. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to share again. Good job. Good job. Uh, let me share my screen again with you. So we can get back to our PowerPoint. There we go. Yeah, great job. So that is in your script book. Please do um, practice those scripts. We're also going to practice one where when we're actually at the open house. But again, all of this has happened before we even have, we have not even had our open house yet. Uh, we're doing all of this work prior to the open house. Um, I forgot to mention one thing about picking the location and checking traffic patterns and things for your open house when you decide to pick one. Over 50% of people stop uh, by an open house on impulse. Um, so, an, an, you know, so a high traffic area or an area that's by uh, shopping centers, because if you think about what people do on Saturday mornings, you know, maybe Saturday at 10 or 11, they're going to TJ Maxx and the grocery store and people are kind of out doing their weekend errands. Uh, so since they're just stopping by on impulse, it may be a good idea to maybe even do it earlier than one and do it in areas that, you know, people are going to be kind of taking that route. To the grocery store or to you know um, retail shopping or those kind of things. I, I meant to mention to you that half people stop by on impulse. I just want to make sure you guys knew that part. Um, okay, awesome. So we've done that. We've done our role model, and now now we've moved on. Let's now we're actually prospecting. All of that was preparation for our open house. Now we're spreading the word on our social uh, social media ads and campaigns, and here we are again, uh, back to command, and we're creating a campaign. Um, so we're doing a campaign. Again, we could also do Facebook ads, all of those kinds of things. Um, and we'll name the campaign. How many of you guys have done this? We've talked about this several times since we've been doing client social, social media ads and campaigns. Alma says, still not yet. Jay Kaz and the rest of you guys aren't showing your face. So I don't know what you're saying. Um, yes. I'm showing my face. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so here's a name the campaign. We can make it. We can name a campaign. Uh, we can select a goal for the campaign. For open houses, we're doing event awareness. That's what this is. We want to give event awareness. We're marketing an event. Um, so you can choose the social media platform you want to do it on, whether you're doing it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, we're going to do that. And then you can go ahead and create your ad uh, campaign and market this open house on social media. Um, so that's part of prospecting again, of course. Um, and you may want to, you know, just use a little catchy phrase and do something that's going to bring them back to your, um, you know, your Facebook page, your, your page, your, your landing page or whatever you call that so that you can grab that lead. Also make sure you're adding the um, lead sheet. Do you guys know about the lead sheet in um, command? Yes. I'm, okay, you're saying yes. Just want to make sure. The buyer lead sheet you're speaking about? There's a lead sheet for when people actually respond to your ad on social media. Um, and so there's a couple of articles I can, that are in, I don't think they're in your handout, but they're in mine of links that I can send you, to you to make sure that you are properly marketing an open house through the social ads so that you can get um, you know, people's response. 
So I'll send those, I'll, I'll send those to you with the homework today. Okay. okay. Yeah, and can you include the lead sheet? Thank you. I mean, I don't think I have that. Um, so uh, in your Ignite toolkit, there's actually the lead sheet. It's also an open house sign-in sheet and several other um, things for you to uh -huh. use for open houses. So all of that is in your Ignite toolkit. Okay. I mean, I missed the, the first kit. part. Was it part of the uh, Climb 1? Yeah, the, the same toolkit. You access it through your MyKW. MyKW.com. You log in and go to Education. And then um, when you're in Ignite 2.0, there's a link for um, the... Okay. You know what? And since you're mentioning it, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. When you, when you download it, uh, I don't know if you can see my, can you see my screen? Yeah, we see the presentation. You still see the presentation? Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you. I was trying, yeah, I want to, okay. So do you see like my whole screen now? Yeah. Okay, so I, in the, when you, when you click on the link in Ignite mm. Toolkit, it gives you a whole folder like this. Okay. And inside of this folder, you've got the 66 day challenge. You've got a 401 template. You've got buyer lead sheets, checklists um, for preparing an offer. I mean, literally anything you need. Both of your script books are in here. Um, your, your daily 10-4 tracking is in here. Here's your whole open house job aid. Um, everything you need to know about holding an open house is in here. Here's the open house sign in sheet that's in here. Safety tips, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. That's all in here. Um, so pretty much everything that you need for anything we talk about in Ignite is in this toolkit here. Okay, awesome. Thank okay, you. so when you go to your MyKW and you click on um, Ignite 2.0 or whatever, it, it, this is a link, a link and it will download this onto your computer. All right, let me get back to the presentation. Okay, so... Um, so we've done the, pro now we're doing the prospecting part. Uh, during this, we want to build rapport, qualify our leads, and make sure that we're providing value because um, we're promoting and hosting the open house at this point. So uh, the prospect stage is all about hosting it and capturing leads. Um, so you want to build rapport, which means what? How do you build rapport? It's right there on the screen. The answer is there. Well, you, you basically <laughs> make sure to greet everybody that come into the door. Be You'd friendly. be surprised how many people don't do that. I mean, that's so simple. They walk on the door and you greet them. I have gone to open houses where I walked in and they're literally sitting at the table reading the paper. <laughs> it's crazy. Ignoring, totally ignore me. And I'm like, hey, hi, hello. Oh yeah, hi, come on in. That's it. <laughs> that's wow. it. But you want to make sure you agree. And however, there's the, there's the other side of that. I've been to an open house where they hounded me and harassed me and walked around with me and followed me through the whole doggone house, which is irritating as I'll get out. And I don't even remember what the house looked like because I want to get out of there so fast. Um, so there's the other end of it where they just won't leave you alone. You don't want to be that guy either. Um, but make sure you are at least greeting people who come in the house and have a guest sign-in sheet. We want them to sign in so of course we can capture their information for our database. What's the most effective way you think to get people to sign in? Because this is one where people don't want to do it. People don't want to sign in and give you their information. How do you think we can do this? Maybe do a small raffle. Yeah. A raffle. Okay. Maybe we do a raffle. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, this new method that I've been using, <laughs> it's a little, um, uh, I guess you can say I'm taking advantage of this COVID thing. I have not been printing the MLS sheets. I tell them if they are interested in getting a sheet, they would have to provide me with their email address and I email it to them right then and there. That way I capture their correct information. So once um, I send it, I say, um, just, I just wanna check and make sure that you received it. Can you uh, make sure I didn't fudge any of the letters? And then they'll usually turn the phone around and show me that they received it and I know I've got a valid email address. Awesome. Um, so we'll talk in a minute about some other creative ways to get them to sign in. Uh, but we do need to take advantage of this one-on-one -on -one time. And that's our one-on-one -on -one time was really right when they first walk in when we're, you know, building rapport and meeting them. And we can wow these people by showing them our, our neighborhood expertise, you know. Um, the neighborhood snaps, we're going to talk about that, the neighborhood snapshot. Um, that's a, in command, that's a great way to wow them. And um, we're going to qualify them by simply asking probing questions. What's a probing question? What brought you in today? That's it. Okay. What brought you in today? Oh, yeah, I'm just looking. Looking at houses. What else is a probing question? How soon are you looking to buy or sell? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. You're looking to buy a house. How soon are you looking to move? 
Okay. What else can we ask them? Do you currently live in this neighborhood? Oh, okay. Are you a neighbor? Or are you just looking in this neighborhood? Are you new to the neighborhood? Oh, you're new to the neighborhood. Oh my gosh, so many cool things. Coffee shop down there. Da, 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 da. Here, let me show you the neighborhood snapshot. Um, okay. What other probing questions can we ask? What's your motivation for moving? Um, assuming that we've already asked them that they are moving, yeah, right? We yeah. can make, oh, really? Why like a follow-up. Yeah. And so here's the, here's the thing where it says identify willingness. This is what we're going to call common sense, okay? Realize, please, for the love of God, realize when you are harassing people, okay? Yeah. There is a fine line between probing questions and harassment. Do not be harassing these people. How many of these questions, when you start asking somebody questions back to back to back to back, that is called an interrogation, okay? Yeah. No one wants to be interrogated. So someone like me, I'm normally nice the first couple of questions, but I'm trying to be a little standoffish because I really don't want to talk to you. Now, if you have not picked up on that and you continue to ask me questions, it's going to go from nice to not so nice, you know? <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to be nice here. I don't want to talk to you. So please, please be able to identify their willingness to have a communication and a conversation with you so you don't embarrass yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you're not, I, you know, harassing these people. So what kind of, like, when would you stop? When have you asked enough questions? Let's somebody, let's role play. Let's just do that right now. Jake, be, be the agent. You're at the open house. Okay. All right. So I walk in the door and what happens? Hey there, welcome in. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? One second, I gotta change to where I can see you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm doing well. Thanks. What brings you in? Uh, you know, I'm I'm just in the neighborhood. Just kind of saw your sign and figured I'd stop and see what kind of houses are in here. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you don't live in this area right now? I don't. I was actually headed to the store. Oh, great. What neighborhood are you in? A different one. Okay. Awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah. go ahead and take a look around. I'm gonna catch you back on as you're leaving and ask you a couple more questions just to see what you think about the property. Okay. See, Jake is very smart. Immediately, he realized, I'm not trying to tell you all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to talk. <laughs> now, what Jake, now, what else could Jake have done in that situation where I said a different one? Which one is that? Uh, oh, which one? Oh, one, one, you know, a little ways from here. Oh, no. really? Which one? Is it close to it? Okay, you know what? You already are irritating me. I already, yeah. obviously, I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> so, Jake has social and emotional intelligence, and he realizes I was intentionally not giving him information and he didn't harass me and you know what i'm gonna do with that i'm actually gonna talk to jake again when i leave because jake seems like he's a pretty smart guy if you jake would have kept harassing me i would never talk to jake again in my life yeah you duck out the back door and try to sneak out the, out the gate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm avoiding jake at all costs because jake is irritating you know yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to be that guy so do be able to identify their willingness to have a communication with you know the difference and know when you've asked too many questions um so okay thank you for doing that so mm -hmm. um, and then so we're, and then of course we can provide value by showing them the neighborhood snapshots and so on and so forth so here's the lead sheet guys um and you can capture it right there on your phone isn't that cool you can put them right there on your phone as a new contact um, and you could do it on an iPad if you have your iPad, but here's the lead sheet. It's asking for their name, email address, phone number. Are they currently working with the realtor? That's it. If you're going to use a lead sheet form, um, it's a good idea to fill out the first one. People follow suit. They do what they see other people doing. That's how people are. So wouldn't be a bad idea to put your name or a fake name or somebody's name, um, on that top one, just so people see that other people are already doing it and they have a little more willingness to actually fill out your sign in sheet. Uh, another way that people get people to sign in is to simply tell them that, the, you know, the seller for security purposes is requesting everybody in their home, you know, sign in, which is fair. If somebody lives there, you know, it's a fair request to, to, for the seller to be able to know who came in their house. Um, so oftentimes it's okay if you put that off on the seller, you know, the seller would like to know who came into their home today, if you wouldn't mind just filling this information out. It, also with COVID-19, we are technically supposed to be still using the COVID showing form. Mm -hmm. um, so you can sidestep that a little bit by at least like saying like due to COVID-19, we are um, heavily tra tracking, you know, who's entering each home. So I do need you to sign in. Um, that's just for health and security reasons. Yeah. And that's obviously people should hopefully respect that if, if nothing else. Um, this, again, of course, you can just put them directly into your command and you can also offer to set people up. I mean, offer them uh, to provide them with the consumer app. Say, hey, it looks like you're out selling houses. You know, if you want to just use this 
consumer app, it will show you all the other houses that are for sale in the area. It's GPS powered, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, if you want to just give me your number or your information, I can just text it over to you real quick. Obviously, once they have your app on their phone, you've got their information as well. Um, so that's a good way to capture people's lead, uh, capture people's information there also. Um, so making sure you get the pertinent information. Uh, create a neighborhood landing page. Do you guys know what this is? A landing page is done in command, of course. Uh, and you can click on the consumer icon and you can, um, whether you want to be a landing page or your, go to your agent site or whatever, a standalone page, you can just create whatever kind of page you want. Um, but this could be a neighborhood landing page because you could maybe have it up uh, on your tablet or something like that. And it's got information and you could capture the, the lead information there. You see down here, it says interested because maybe they're interested in certain things uh, in the area or something like that. But this would be a good way to capture information as well because you can create a page, add the little listing widget to your page, add the lead form widget to your page and boom, you got a cute page with information about the house information about the neighborhood and they can, um, you've provided value, you know, and you can capture the lead that way. Now, let's talk about safety. Sometimes, every once in a while, guys, bad stuff happens at open houses. Um, and so uh, just wanna make sure you're aware of some safety issues. Um, well, parking on the street, why are we parking on the street? A whole bunch of reasons, but what do you think they are? <laughs> So you can get out if you need to? You're not blocking Yeah, out. if you park in the driveway, somebody can block you in and you can't get out. Mm -hmm. So one, you want to make sure that you park where you can get out whenever you need to. The other reason is, um, I don't like when I go to open houses and the agent's car is blocking the whole house. Like I can't even see that you had your car just all in the way, you know. So one, you want to make sure that you're not blocking the house or causing any kind of obstruction of you or anything else to the house. But two, yeah, you want to be able to get out. So make sure that you're parking um, on the street or somewhere that you can do that. You want to meet the neighbors. Why? So they know who you are. Yeah, and quite frankly, like Lakeisha, unfortunately, the experience that happened to you the other day, you know, you, you want to make sure the neighbors know that you're a realtor and you're going to be in this person's house, you know, mm -hmm. holding an open house. So, so one, so that the neighbors don't act all ridiculous. Uh, and two, yeah, in, in the event that you need to run over there for some reason, um, you've already introduced yourself to the neighbors and they know that there's a realtor next door doing an open house. So uh, people know you're there. Um, when showing yeah, up. So, so they won't call the police on you, right? That's what I'm saying, how, like, what happened to Lakeisha the other day. Yes, yeah, so we don't want that. We don't want that. Um, do not turn your back on a prospect. And this is in general. This is a, this is a safety uh, showing um, safety tip in general to not have people walking directly behind you where you've turned your back on on the, the client or the prospect or the whoever. Um, that is not safe. There's been, don't go in any basements. You know, I was holding an open house one time and the guy's like, oh, can you show me the basement? No, it's right there. You can go down there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going down there. And I'm certainly not going down there before you or up there before you, because now you have your back turned to this person. That's not safe. When you're, whether you're showing or holding an open house or anything, do not turn your back to the people. You need to be able to see them. And I normally let people go first. If you want to go, if I am showing a house, I, I'm either over here, you know, letting them kind of, and I'll go after you, but don't, uh, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't see what they're about to do, um, or you are in a position for them to do you harm because you're physically in a position um, that's not a safe position to be immediately in front of somebody like that. So don't turn your back on the uh, prospect. Make sure you know how to get out. Um, in the event someone comes, I have had somebody come in and lock the door behind them at an open house. Uh, and so if they have done that and they're blocking the front door, do you know how else you can get out of this house? Um, it, do you have an escape route that you need to uh, have? Um, so, so that, of course, you need, someone needs to know where you are what time you're gonna be there, when you're gonna be done, all those kinds of things as well. Um, and you don't want your cell phone to be dead ever, quite honestly. I don't even walk my dog with a dead cell phone. I'm like if somebody picks me up in some truck, I need to be able to have my cell phone working <laughs> ever. You always wanna have your cell phone charged. You don't wanna be in someone's house with strangers coming in and have no way to contact anyone or to reach out for help. 
Uh, so to make sure your, your stuff. Some of the other things that aren't on here for just safety for clients and, and other things is that, um, you know, medications, people come in to be, understand, people come into open houses to case houses. People come into open houses to steal medication. People come into houses to do, to steal uh, social security numbers, private documents, mail, those kind of things. So one, you want to make sure your seller is aware that none of those kind of things should be out. There should be no medicine out in the, in the bathrooms. Shouldn't be any mail or anything like that. If they've got uh, private documents, they should be locked up. You know, all of those kind of common sense things to make sure that you're protecting your seller's information. Um, but knowing that people sometimes um, come in for the wrong reasons. Uh, I've heard crazy stories. Some, some people, one, one girl I had, she had somebody come into her open house to go into the bathroom to use their own drugs. Like you couldn't find anywhere else to do drugs. You just chose this random house to come in. And yeah, they chose this random house because it looked like a good place for them to come and lock themselves in there. And they were in there for like 45 minutes. She had to call the police. She didn't know what to do. Um, weird stuff happens. So just make sure that you understand that weird stuff happens, you know, and, and that you have an escape route and that you put yourself in a safe position uh, and you're aware of your surroundings. That's the other reason why some of these open houses can get really busy. You may hold an open house that's, that's really busy and there's a lot of people and you can't keep track of everybody, you know, and where everybody went. Uh, and all of those kind of things. Be aware of your surroundings. That's why when people are sitting at the table reading papers and stuff like that, and there's all kind of people coming in and out. If something were to happen and the police came and asked you what they look like, you don't know. You've been reading the paper. You know, <laughs> you were paying no attention. You know, so make sure that you are at least aware of your surroundings um, and all of that. So before we move on, I just want to make sure any ahas or any things that you can think of to make sure that you are protecting yourself. And I don't care if you're a, a woman or a man or anything. Things, these things happen to men also. Other than the fact that your faces are just like, oh my God, right now. What? <laughs> Any ahas? I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to do this safely. Uh, it, what, what kind of ahas or things that will you do differently or kind of precautions will you take to protect your seller and yourself? Definitely the drugs and private information, personal information yeah. of seller, I think would be the yeah. top thing. And also don't show your back. Uh, never show your back. I don't care if you're just showing houses to a client you even know. Yeah. Whenever or your I exit know, plan. I always keep my car keys in my pocket. So if I have to run, I can just get to my car and just drive away. Good point, Samita. And where's your purse? Well, I mean, I normally don't get my purse in. There you go. Okay. I have a box that I carry with the things that I need for the open house, like flyers and cards and things like that. Yeah. But my phone, and I make it a point to wear something that has pockets, simply because I can keep my phone and my keys on me all the time. Yeah. I have walked into open houses where people had their purse just sitting on the counter in the kitchen. Like, are you serious right now? Yeah. <laughs> and they are, so things like, good point, good point. What else have you kind of learned? What other precautions are you going to take? I unlock the back doors and sometimes the back fence to create that um, escape route if need be. But it also, the doors are open. So if somebody wants to see the backyard, you don't have to let them try to open or break anything or whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's keep it moving. All right. So now we've had this open house. These people have come in. We've captured the leads. And it is critical that we do the follow-up so that we can convert them. Here we are. And this goes back into, does this look familiar, guys? This should look familiar. Yes. And this is our funnel. And we're at the cultivate part uh, where we're nurturing these qualified leads. Because, uh, of course, all of this is about getting an appointment, right? We want to get an appointment. So now we're going to follow up and uh, convert these people into actual real clients. Um, so we may have their information in our database, of course. We may have them on a smart plan, hopefully. Um, hopefully, you've been able to maybe give them your app or some something of value that has given you a reason to follow up with them. Uh, and when you put them in there into your command, because you've got their information, uh, you can put them on a touch campaign and, and uh, identify them as open house lead or immediate seller, or immediate buyer, future buyer, future seller, whatever they are. Um, but make sure that they're in your database so that they're getting something from you. Okay, best practices. Here's some interesting things I thought uh, when I saw this. Has anyone ever heard of someone hosting a speaker at an open house? Okay, so this was kind of a cool concept, me either. Um, so this was kind of a cool concept when I was reading this course material about um, maybe a contractor 
or a home stager or a, um, I thought when I was reading this, I thought about, I have a friend who's a gardener. She's got a beautiful yard. Uh, and that might be one of the things that you use to invite people to the open house when you are inviting the neighbors or door knocking or calling or circle prospecting. You may say, hey, we've got an open house happening on Saturday at one and we have a stager there uh, who can give you ideas on how you could stage your house to make it look like a show home or a model home or a whatever. Uh, so hosting a speaker of some, somebody who does something like that um, potential buyers may want to come and uh, see those kind of things. Um, so that those things, because I've heard of people, you know, co-hosting with loan officers and that kind of thing, but I've never heard of anybody actually uh, inviting a guest speaker or a general contractor to come and talk about home improvement techniques. So maybe on your flyer, it says open house at one, two, three Main Street on Saturday from one to two and um, 12 home improvement tips from Joe Schmo, the contractor guy. Um, but that would be something that would draw neighbors to come to the open house. I kind of want to hear some things that Joe Schmo might say we can do to upgrade our home, you know. Um, so those kind of things uh, is, a, is an awesome idea, you know, to get creative. Adding a carrot, basically. What's that? Adding a carrot. Yes, a carrot. That's exactly what it is. Yes. Uh, offering a gift. Um, I think we talked about already a raffle. Maybe it's a gift certificate to a local neighborhood. Maybe you didn't have to pay for it. Maybe you went to the local coffee shop and said, hey, I'm holding an open house down the street. I'd like to offer all of the people who come by a gift. Do you have something that I could use as a gift to draw people to your coffee shop? You maybe don't even need to pay for this. They may be willing to uh, donate that for your open house because it uh, obviously um, gives them business as well. Um, Maybe there's an open house. That, it gives us an idea of an open house scavenger hunt. Um, and so here's how that works. And I'm just going to read it verbatim because I've never done this. Um, give visitors a card with clues and questions to answer as they tour the home. Some example questions are, how many fireplaces does this home have? Which room has an inviting window seat overlooking the backyard? Which rooms fe feature custom built-in shelvings? And if they are able to answer those questions from you, uh, for you, they win a gift. Um, so that's kind of a fun spin, doing like a little um, uh, walkthrough. So you're not only giving them a reason to pay more attention as they do the walkthrough, but you're kind of teaching them about the home speeches in a fun way. Um, agents with the office held nine open houses in the same area on the same day, providing visitors with a checklist to fill out as they went along. Um, it's kind of like an open house blitz. Oh, these are just some different ideas that they're um, offering. Those who visited all nine homes in the area got entered into a drawing from an iPad. Um, so that's kind of cool. So basically what they're saying is there's agents in the office. They had nine different open houses going on in a particular neighborhood or community. And when somebody came to one house, they said, hey, uh, we've got some coworkers down the street holding an open house. If you go to all nine of these and get them signed off by our agents, we're, we're entering you into a drawing for an uh, uh, iPad. Um, so that was a cool idea. Just getting creative, you know, with these kind of things, um, just to make it a little more fun. Uh, another thing, of course, um, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's that. Okay, let's talk about, um, no, I don't want to go that far. I still want to talk about um, getting, oh, getting the house in the showing shape. What does showing shape mean? Because it's already listed, right? This house is already listed, so it's already in listing condition, but what does showing shape for an open house mean? Decluttered. Okay, declutter, which hopefully is done uh, ready because they should be showing the home because it's for sale, right? Like turn off the light, turn on the light and AC or heater and yeah, turn on the light. Make, make sure the temperature is is working, which means you have to get there early, right? You can't just be mm -hmm. showing up exactly at the time that the open house is because you want to make sure you got your signs out. You maybe open all the you know blinds, open all the curtains, uh, turn the lights on, make it look inviting, make sure it doesn't stink. Make sure it smells decent, make sure it's clean, you know, just make sure that it's in showing shape because you are also representing yourself at this point, you know, you're in there and you don't want to be, and you can't be blaming the homeowner or the listing agent. Oh, I don't know. This isn't really my listing. It is your listing. If it's your broker's listing, it's your listing. You know, you're representing the seller. Your broker represents the seller. So make sure that you, it's in showing shape. And then of course you go, you go live and you make sure the house looks its best from the inside and the out. While hosting, some do's and don'ts. Um, I'll tell you one that's not on here off top. Don't be on your cell phone. I cannot stand going into an open house and the agent is just chatting it up with their friend on their cell phone. Um, 
I went into open houses where uh, the agent is not just chatting with a friend, but they're actually conducting other business, which I think they thought made them look really cool that they're like a really busy superstar agent. But what they were doing was disclosing all their clients' information to random people. Like I was like, oh, okay, I know exactly what house they're talking about. Now I know how many offers. I know all this pertinent information about what he's talking about on the phone with these people. Um, you know, he was disclosing information. So being on the phone is not a good idea. Um, one, you can't welcome people in if you're busy doing something else. So do make sure you're available to welcome visitors that come in the door and the house looks good and you're aware for safety reasons and uh, making sure, of course, we're not leaving valuables exposed or food, sitting there eating, those kind of things. I do like it that it says, don't make assumptions. What kind of assumptions do you think agents make at open houses? He doubles it. You'll oh. assume sometimes that someone can't afford it. Yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll assume sometimes that, that people who walk in, and sometimes people, you know, maybe don't greet because they're like, oh, they can't afford this house anyway, you know. Um, so don't make an assumption that people can't afford the home or wouldn't be a qualified buyer or seller. What other kind of assumptions do you think people make? That someone that says they're just browsing is just looking for fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's probably not true. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. What else could we add to the do list as far as best practices? What are some things we could do? Um, especially right now with coronavirus, do take social cues or mirror those people. So if it's someone that is wearing a mask, they're obviously conscious about it. So you should, I like, I did one this past weekend and I made sure that I was in a place well, the seller required it, but I had already planned before I knew the seller was going to require masks. I made sure that I was sitting or like my stuff was set up at a window. So I could tell when people were walking up, if they were going to have masks on, then I was going to make sure to wear my masks too. Uh, I'm comfortable either way. So if someone was walking up and they weren't going to wear a mask, then I could mirror them. Um, so I think right now it's just do mirror people. Yeah, and do make sure you have, you know, cleaning supplies as well, you know, sanitizer, uh, things to wipe down the surfaces. Um, do make sure you have, you know, uh, things to, to make sure the home is safe as far as, you know, with cleaning solutions, sanitizers, those kind of things. That's a, definitely a good idea. You also want to make sure that maybe, we already talked about making sure you know what's going on in the neighborhood as far as other houses. Maybe you have some handouts or um, documents pertaining to the house that you need to make sure are set out. Um, those kind of things, but don't, uh, don't uh, make any assumptions and assume that, uh, don't assume people actually want to have lengthy conversations with you. Don't assume they don't, you know, um, just don't make any assumptions really. Uh, so these are just some do's and don'ts. We could add to this list for quite some time. Here's some best practice success kit tips, um, which is a really good idea. We already talked about disinfectant wipes, making sure we have that, uh, making sure we have sanitizer, those kind of things. Um, making sure you have your business cards. Why toilet paper? Anybody ever been caught at a house and you use the bathroom and use no toilet paper? <laughs> I am infamous for having pregnant women come to my open houses and they cannot hold their bladder. So I keep toilet paper just in case they need to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> toilet paper, paper towels, pens, air fresheners for that reason in case they do use the bathroom. Yes. Uh, your phone needs to be charged. Don't forget that. Make sure you've got that. Why, why do we need a measuring tape? Sometimes they ask for measurements of the rooms. Yeah, they, if, they, if they need to know what the measurements of the rooms are, maybe they're, maybe best case scenario, they're trying to figure out if their couch would fit here. Exactly. Ooh, that means they like this house, right? And so they, oh yeah, look at that. There's plenty of space for your couch. It fits right there. You know? So um, those kind of things, trash bags, tissues, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we talked about this already after the open house, making sure that you're doing proper follow-up uh, with these people, because here's our, here's our funnel again. Um, we've captured the lead, we put them in there, we've connected with them, and now we need to cultivate this lead to turn it into uh, an appointment. Remember, your main goal in business is to get into relationships with people. That is what your job is in this industry. You are in the relationship business. Your business is to lead, generate, and to get into relationships with people. So uh, when they know you, like you, trust you, they are most likely going to do business with you. They can only do that if you've followed up with them. Um, you know, so you have to make sure that you're doing that. 
uh, that people are following up with people and, and providing them with value, you know, as well. Um, what else have we, have you, what questions do you still have or things we still should talk about that we didn't already cover yet? Because the goal of this time together, guys, is to make sure that you think, feel, act, and actually use what we've learned in this Climb 2.0 to ignite your passion and make sure you're selling more homes and get to your big why. That's the whole purpose of all of this. So with all of that, what ahas have you come to realize today about what you could be doing better or differently or any of those things? Um, oh my gosh, I didn't hear you mention food and drinks and all of that kind of stuff. I never oh did. <laughs> I never did. So do tell, what could we do? What kind of food or drinks or such could we do? Well, none right now, I feel like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unless you're doing like individual bottled water, like the small minis. I do that at my open houses. Um, but I'm not a huge like food person anyways. I don't want people... I had, I've been to some where, you know, you see people eating cookies walking around the house. And I'm like, th there's just crumbs everywhere. So I'm not a huge person on food, but I think bottled water is always nice to have if you can provide that, like the small mini bottles. Yeah, you know, when I was gonna, when you were when you were talking, what it reminded me of, and I really liked this idea. I, I don't like open food ever, really. Um, packaged food, like, you know how you can go to Costco or something and buy like the little, um, you know, Oreo, miniature Oreo things that come in the, you know, package. But what it reminded me of was re when I flew recently, um, what Delta does is they don't give you, you don't have like a snack cart coming up and down the aisle or anything like that right now. They, in a bag, have just a little small bag that's tied up, which means don't open it here, right? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is your to-go bag. And it had a little bottle of water in it and it had a little, little snack in it and it's tied up, right? And it's just something you could put in a cute basket that people could take with them and have your card in it. Right. So you could have a little bottle of water, a little packaged cookie in your card in a little tied up bag. Those could be something that you prepare to just give people as a parting gift. So that's don't what, that's like yeah, don't you here. This is a parting gift. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you would still do that now, Julia, or no? Yeah, because they're not opening anything. I'm not, they're not, you're not touching anything. Everything is bottled and bagged and tied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so particularly I would do it now because it's not like it's exposed food or cookies or things that people are touching. Um, it's something for me to hand them on their way out. I've also done mimosas. Yeah. What's Miguel saying? I can't hear him. He's giving away liquor and he's also done like a mimosa um, bar. It's like in the mini bottles, they travel with them. So he's, you know. I, I just want to put a disclaimer on my card. I am not responsible for whatever happens if you consuming this. <laughs> Right, on your way home. Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay, like that's cool. And brunch open houses, I think, are Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So fun things. You can get creative with the with the with that. But yeah, I, as far as for right now, I would not have exposed food or drink. Um, if you wanted to do something like that, I would package it in such a way that they take it with them. You know, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. To go on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think exactly. I yeah. I think I had food at mine, like my very first one, and someone was like, um, do you have gluten-free options? And I was like, I am not bringing food again, because <laughs> you run the risk of, I mean, so many people have allergies or things, that, which is okay, but then yeah. as soon as you don't have something for that option for them, then it makes that kind of conversation a little more difficult after that. The experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One cute uh -huh. thing that I have seen in the past, and I know like Sameta uses it, she uh, provides an individual um, popcorn, microwave popcorn, and it says, thanks for popping by with her card attached. Yeah, with your card attached. And again, as a parting gift, right? Here's yeah. for you to use later. Yeah. <laughs> and your card's the kids. Yeah. They're happy to have something to take back. Um, okay, I want to do, uh, the, I want to go back to the scripts because we talked about what to do when they're in the home. I want to actually look at, um, I, I just have a quick question, if you don't mind, Julia. Sure, go ahead. Just, just I just have a, I don't know, I want to call it crazy idea, but what if there is a fizzball and, you know, you approach them and they, they, they are not ready to list. Is it a good idea to offer them that I, we can hold an open house for them? You can offer to hold an open house for a fizzball if you'd like. Yeah, that's some value that you're adding to them and you get an opportunity to build a relationship with them. 
Um, okay, I've got the script up for during the open house about, um, we about just welcoming people. Can someone, can you guys see this? No. You cannot see it, okay, hold on. How about now? Yes. Okay, can someone please read the during the open house welcome script? Hi, I'm Jake Langford with Total Williams Central. Thank you for coming by my open house today. I found that people come to open houses for two reasons. They're either thinking about buying or they're curious about what their home is worth. Which are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm curious about what my home is worth. Oh, we're full going. Um, yeah, we're still going. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, well, I'd be happy to get with you and and share that information with you. What area do you live in right now? I live down the street. Oh, awesome. Great. So I know a lot about this area. Um, I'd be happy to set up an appointment with you. Um, it's, I can give you kind of a ballpark, but for me to get a really good idea of what your home is worth, I need to see the interior. Um, are you open? I could stop by right after the open house today. We're finishing up at four. I can be oh, done. Oh, you can? That would be awesome. Yeah, if you just stop by today, then I don't have to like, yeah, that's fine. What time are you Great. done? Yeah, um, I'm done at four, so I can be there at four fifteen. In the meantime, why don't you take a look around and see what you like about this house, and uh, maybe we can talk about even staging your home later today. Oh, you stage homes? I do. Yes. Oh, I hit the jackpot with you, huh? Okay. Absolutely. All right, fun stuff. Okay. Um, what if this conversation went differently? Uh, Jake, let's do it again. Let's do it differently. Catch me in a bad mood. Uh, so. Okay. So Hi, I walk in the door. Hi there. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. I'm Jake with Color Room Central. Thanks for coming to my open house today. Yeah. I found that people either come to open houses for two reasons. They're thinking oh. about buying or they're curious about what their home is worth. Which are you? Neither. All right then. Okay, well, um, that, <laughs> you may just be looking around, so enjoy and I'll catch you as you're leaving and get your feedback on the house. And I might ask, so what, what brings you by? Yeah, okay. Right here. Yeah. yeah. What did Dell say? Why are you here? Yeah, why are you here then? I was like, oh, okay, you need a win? Okay, well, what, that, you, then you, I guess you're the third. What's the third option? What brings you by? I'm nosy, you know. <laughs> Nothing at all. I saw a table, I've done this before. I saw this chandelier from the window and I kind of wanted to know where it was from. You know, <laughs> random Let me reason. get that information for you. What's your phone number so I can reach out after I ask Yeah, you. exactly, I'll ask the seller. Okay, and either way, you got my information. Okay, so here's the follow-up. There's <laughs> someone other than Lakeisha and Jake who have participated. Someone else needs to participate. Someone else read the after the open house follow-up script. I'll read it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, give me a second. <laughs> Hello, I'm Trisha Boyd with Keller Williams in the Central 75 Market Center. We met earlier today at the open house. Are you interested in buying a home, selling your current home or both? I'm interested in, uh, I was kind of just interested in buying a home. Oh, okay, that's great. I have great tools to help you find a home. Um, a buyer for your home, oh, I'm sorry. To it's help either or, yeah, it's either or. You have, you, you have great tools to help me find a home, yeah. Okay, that I would love to share with you. Oh, okay. Um, we could get together tomorrow around four if that works for you. Uh, no, I wasn't really planning on meeting with a realtor. I'm just kind of looking online by myself right now. Okay, um, you stumped me. I know, right? That's why we practice, because good, I would rather stump you here than stump you in real life, right? Yep. That's exactly what script practice is all about. So, so you just keep practicing the script with different scenarios of things that people could say, um, you know, and, and you get comfortable with having that conversation so that you never get stumped, so that you aren't stumped. That's exactly why we practice the scripts. So uh, someone else, thank you, Trisha, for doing that. Um, somebody else, somebody else read the script and I'll be there and I'll give you a different stump, not that stump. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just say, okay. I'll, I'll try it. All right. Hello, I'm Alma Sosa from Keller Williams Central. We met earlier today at the open house. 
Oh, yeah. Are you interested in actually buying or selling your current home or maybe possibly both? Well, actually, neither. I was just I was just headed to the store and I saw your sign. So I I stopped by. I'm not really doing either. OK, so was there something about the house that caught your attention? Or no, maybe a random person that stops by random people's houses when I'm on my way to the grocery store sometimes. OK, well, what I will do is I will let you go ahead and tour the house. I will actually maybe if you can spare a couple of seconds, just ask me what you think. I already, about. This is the follow up. I've already been at the house and you've got my information in your call. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> OK, I have great tools to help you find uh, either a, either to sell your house or to buy another house when you are ready. OK, I would love to share. Uh, we could get together. I have two options. I either have available today. Now, uh, in this in this circumstance, where we offer options, I'm not either one. I'm not buying or selling. No. Okay. I think I'm still. Let me ask you: Would you still not want to try to talk to them and give them two possible dates? Uh, or, so I'm not buying or selling. What I might do, though, Emma, is mm -hmm. I might say, "Oh, you're you're not buying or selling." Well, it seems like you're somebody that just likes to look at homes. So I have an app you can do that on. You know, let me, just, let me okay. share my app with you, and then you can look at all the homes you want, girlfriend. And all, you know, all across the country. You know, sounds okay. like you like to look at stuff. You know, <laughs> but maybe good. we wouldn't meet because I'm not. I'm saying I'm not buying or selling. But since obviously I say I just like to look at homes, well, cool. I've got the perfect tool for you to just look at homes. Okay. Hey, cool. do you tell me something, Alma? Do you like to look at homes in, in just any area, or was it that neighborhood specific that, that you like? It would be uh, in that neighborhood. Oh, yeah, no. me too. I thought, man, I saw some really cool stuff in that neighborhood. I've got this thing, uh, uh, this neighborhood snapshot thing I can send you, and it gives you all these cool tools and blah, blah, blah about the neighborhood. I'll send you that too, since you're like me and you like this neighborhood. Okay. All right, awesome. Um, tell, and then here's the thing, though. I'm going to be honest with you, Alma. This is fairly new for me using this tool. If okay. it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, will you call me? Here's my number, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, or is it okay if you, once you do start using it, it, it again, like I said, it's fairly new. Would you mind following up and letting me know how you like it? Okay, good. Yeah, that would be helpful if you could just let me know, you know, if it worked out for you, if you liked it or whatever. You're supposed to say, okay, Alma. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just nodding my head. I just didn't say yeah. anything. <laughs> awesome. Well, it was good to meet you today. If you do have any questions in the future about buying, selling a home, you'll have my information because I'm going to send you this app. You can just click on it anytime it goes directly to me and it's myself. So if you just want to ask random questions about random houses that you're not going to buy or sell, <laughs> I'm happy okay. to answer them. Okay. Because, what, you know, because you know what I want, Alma? I just want to build a relationship with you because I'm in the relationship business. So okay. I don't care if you're looking to buy, sell a house or not. Or like, like Edel was saying, if you came in because you liked the chandelier, I'm about to find out where that chandelier came from for you, Alma, because I want to build a relationship with you. Okay. I, I am in a relationship building business. So we do. Okay. So, okay, guys, that was it. Do practice these scripts so that you don't get stumped. That's what they're for. Um, practice the scripts so you don't get stumped. And the homework for today is, of course, your daily 10-4, practicing your scripts, and I think that was it. I don't think we have any, um, I don't think we have any specific activities that we have to do today other than that. So I think that's all. Any questions about today's class or that you have or any of that? None at all? No. no well, question. hearing none, I'm going to let you guys go out and get it. Uh, well, we're done for today and we'll meet tomorrow. We're doing, um, Tomorrow, seller appointments. Tomorrow, we're doing seller appointments. Brian Davis is teaching seller appointments. Um, and uh, then on Friday, um, Sam Rubin is teaching buyer appointments. Um, so that'll be the end of our week. And then we go into a whole nother week of a whole nother new classes with a bunch of new agents. Not new. Uh, they're not new, but they're new to us teaching. So anyways, that'll be, um, that'll be anything. And you guys know how to reach me if you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Right. Have a fantastic day. See you tomorrow. Thank you, I emailed last week. I sent the email last week. Oh, yeah. I'll call you, Payal. I got a meeting right now at 10.30, but I'll call you right after that. No problem. Thanks. Okay.